Welcome to the Pumper Jones Tabletop Gaming Network, Pumper Jones Tabletop Show, worldwide at PumperJones.com. Now I'm going to take you down to our host, Josh, and he's going to show you three different kinds of dulling sprays and how they interact with the zombie side game miniatures. And now, worldwide, here's your host, Josh. Well, hello, and good evening. I am your host, Zombie Side. As we saw in last episode, um, Poly Shades by Miniwax is a viable alternative to the Army Painter Quick Shade. However, we left on a note that I would like to address. I concluded that I would be using a two parts Poly Shade to one part Mineral Spirits mix. That is to say 66% Poly Shades for my future shading endeavors. However, I have since changed my position. I shaded the rest of the walkers and the runners and just found something a, a little lacking. It just didn't have enough of that organic nature that I was really liking in the poly shades. It was, it was just too thin. So I did uh, the fatties with a three to one ratio. That is to say a 75% poly shades mix and I was very pleased with that. The zombies are all shaded and now they all have a satin sheen to them. So we need to knock down the sheen to a more matte look. And to do that, we are going to test three different products. Rustoleum, Krylon, and Testers. So let's get shaking. I'm just going to spray a whole um, row of miniatures with each of the respective clear coats. Hi ho, hi ho. Is the light level changing pretty drastically in here? I can just move this out of the way. Better light. This would be a great time to bring back the shake weight joke. Shady blue extension. I'm not spraying this on the model, so I'm getting rid of a little bit because I've had experiences in the past where the first little bit of um, clear coat I put on was a lot more um, reflective than the majority of the can. So just for the sake of fairness, I'm going to get rid of a little bit of this. First coat. I'm going to do the same thing with this Krylon and just waste, waste some of it. Do you want to get a little more close on this one? Since I will say this, that Rust-Oleum was a lot more of a directed spray, like, like a, tight, a tighter nozzle, whereas this um, mists a bit more.
What a well-ventilated area. In paint spraying, there are not only the dangerous mists which we can see, but also the invisible harmful vapors given off by the thinner. The air becomes so contaminated that instead of purifying it, it's simpler to bring in fresh outside air. All right, well, we definitely overestimated the uh, the level of ventilation we have in this room. But yeah, I shouldn't have just dumped the, uh, the first bit of that can uh, inside. I should have done that outside. Now we know. This tester is already used, so. And this is the can um, that actually made me think about uh, spraying off the first bit of the can because I immediately started using this can after shaking it quite a bit and it had a satin effect, not a matte fat effect um, that we know and love from testers. So I had to put quite a bit more after I got that after I got that done. It was pretty good. Oh no, go for it. You do you need that? Time? What? Anyways, here we go. Last one. And now a word from our sponsor, Fellows Laptop Riser. Adjustable tilt for optimal viewing angle, stabilizing front edge, holds laptop in place, supports 17 inch laptop, or a maximum weight of 10 pounds. Yeah, I said yes, that meant you were ready. Mm -hmm. All right, we've put the sealer on the miniatures. We've let them sit for a day. I was going to put two layers, but then I didn't. Then I put three to make sure we didn't miss any spots. Let's take a look at them and see how they fared. Uh, let's start this way. Let's start this way, yeah. It became pretty clear looking at the variety of models um, which uh, did the best job of uh, cutting down the shine and or not adding a shine itself. So the interesting thing is uh, the Rust-Oleum seems to have done like seemingly like nothing. Krylon says eliminates glossy sheen, right? And it certainly does that, not as well as testers, um, but it still has very pleasant results. Uh, this doesn't claim anywhere to cut down sheen. It just says seals, protects, and revitalizes. So perhaps it is truly a clear coat that does not have a sheen of its own we are going to um, test a model that we've already put dull coat on. So as testers dull coat, very dull. It also has a particularly glossy point. We used uh, Ard Coat from Citadel to get um, the head glossy. We have two of them. We'll, um, we'll hit the one with um, Rust-Oleum. We'll leave the other alone and we'll test the theory 
is this just going to kind of leave the levels of sheen be as they are? Because I could really use a product like that. So many times um, the tester's dull coat has destroyed a nice uh, metallic that I had painted onto something. And um, I, I would just have to go through with some kind of satin or something to kind of revitalize that. So let's see if Rust-Oleum um, seals, protects, and revitalizes. Here we are with our Royal Guard. And to illustrate with this light, you can definitely see how the light reflects differently on the gloss section. Unfortunately for us, this is what happened to the one we put Rust-Oleum on. It kind of just made everything the same. The theory we developed based on how these zombies over here looked quite similar to these zombies over here is because of one simple fact. Deceit. Satin. Satin and matte. So one of these is lying to us. One of these doesn't know what kind of uh, reflective properties it has. And I tend to agree with the poly shade that that is a satin finish. I think that uh, Rust-Oleum, either they are just filled with deceit or they are like the guy who was putting up the signage up in our office and just didn't even know the difference between matte and gloss. Um, it's just a satin finish, um, which is why it looked basically the same as uh, the polyurethane coming out of the poly shades. So that's what happened there. Rustoleum. Now, I guess this has a use as a satin um, sealer. It's just not remotely matte. Um, Krylon, however, although not as dull um, as the dull coat, I feel like it does fall within the range of what what you could consider matte. It's not as uh, it doesn't have the quite the, the the wonderful sort of clay. Would you would you call clay, it, Thomas? A sort of a clay, clay texture that the dull coat has. Krylon, thank you for not lying to us. I don't know, there may be times where I want something matte, but not as matte as the dull coat, so I could use this. Uh, it could be a character where maybe I do have a lot of metallics on it and the dull coat's really gonna destroy that. Maybe this Krylon would uh, just kinda not, it maybe it would be a nice compromise. That said, I do very much understand now why Tester's dull coat has kind of become the gold standard uh, in this hobby. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta fix this miniature that Rustoleum broke. So I was uh, up late this evening on uh, the computer with Rust-Oleum customer support. And thank you so much Rust-Oleum for rushing out a hot fix. Um, they, they gave me a, a, a firmware update for the Rust-Oleum um, clear coat. So in all fairness, I just wanna let you know that that's out. Um, I don't know if it will change my review of the product, but I, I just wanna be fair, so thank you.